Hello, this is Tim from Vengeance RC Garage. Today I'm going to do a time lapse of my full restoration of my Kyosho vanning. I started with three vannings and tore them all apart. My plan is to build a shelf queen with the best parts, a basher with the second best, and if there's enough for a complete third, put it up for sale on eBay. This video is just for the shelf queen project, the rest is for another time. The vanning was a car that I was really, really wanted as a kid. I saved up my money to buy it and ended up with a bruiser instead. I even had the pictures of the vanning cut out and taped on my school binders. This restore was a challenge for me since it involved a lot of firsts. It was my first non tamiya build, first 1 8 scale build, and my first nitro build. What could possibly go wrong? The first vanning I tore apart was in really, really rough shape. Everything was caked in dirt and many parts were broken. Since this was my first 1 8 scale, I didn't even have the right tools to remove the tires. There are a lot of rods in the wishbone assembly. The grub screw can get embedded and hidden in the plastic, so if one of the rods seems difficult to get out, then it most likely has a hidden grub screw to find. Almost all the screws over 20 millimeters were bent. My plan was to use original screws, nuts, and washers for the queen, but even pulling from three buggies, I could not even get one decent set of hardware. Because of this, I ended up using a new stainless steel screw set. This is one of the few things that I was unable to source from Pure Vintage. I also bought lots of new old stock parts for this restore. I have a quick view at the end of this video of all the parts that I sourced. I ended up buying two large Kyosho eBay stock parts slots for this project. As you can notice, I had to take breaks during the teardown just to wipe all the dirt off my work table. One cleaning technique I used this time was to soak and wash everything in crud cutter, which is a degreaser. It did an amazing job. For the tires and plastic parts, I used a 50-50 water mixture. For all the metal, I used a straight 100% concentration. Make sure you use gloves when handling the solution as over time it will agitate your skin. Once the parts are soaked, all you need to do is agitate the parts in the mixture, rinse everything with clean water, and dry it thoroughly. For good measure, you can use an old toothbrush to get into the nooks and crannies. This process set up all the parts great for the buffing step. The leftover solution was disgustingly dirty. I don't show it, but I spent considerable time at the buffing wheel polishing the metal and the plastics. I was extremely happy with the outcome of the metal, but the plastic just never came out exactly how I wanted it. The first thing I tackled was repainting the shock cylinders. I wanted to get a bright red color for these. I ended up using Tamiya clear red paint to get that effect. Over the silver metal, the outcome was exactly what I was looking for. With the shocks painted, it's now time to start the build. The first step is the steering servo saver mount. It attaches the chassis via a cross mount. The cross mount helps secure the front assembly. Attach the cross mount to the pair of large chassis rods which form the backbone of the entire buggy. Finish the front with the metal spacer. You can leave the rear side stabilizers loose since you'll need to use these to secure the fuel tank in a later step. The steering knuckles go together easily. I use some new old stock upper arms to complete the assembly. Screw in the rod arm ball mounts to the steering knuckles and attach the knuckles to the arms using some new old stock screws. Next up are the front shock assembly. I added damper oil to both the front and rear shocks. Try to avoid too much overflow when filling since the oil can erode the paint. The springs are tight and securing them with the collars took a few tries. Be careful in this step since it is very easy to scratch the paint job if the springs rub up against the shock cylinder. Make sure you bleed the oil by moving the damper up and down to get out air bubbles. Test to make sure they move up and down smoothly. I used a bunch of new old stock parts for the wishbone assembly. These include rubber shock gaskets, rod shafts, and shock mount ball joints. Make sure you use grease when you insert the rods so that things don't bind during use. The rods have one flat end and one open end, so make sure you insert the rod from the correct direction. The rods also come in three different lengths, so make sure you follow the instructions carefully. Each of the rod shafts is secured with one grub screw so they don't work their way out during operation. Secure both the top and bottom parts of the shock and make sure that the entire assembly moves smoothly. Repeat the entire process for the other side. I used the heavy differential oil for the differential assemblies. I found it easier to first fill half with oil and then insert the diff gears working out any air bubbles when inserting the gears. Top off any extra space after removing air. 
Make sure to close the fill hole with the grub screw. Top off the differential with the toothed metal plate and attach it with four screws. Clean up any overflow. Repeat the same steps for the second differential. With the differentials complete, it's time to attach the front wishbone assembly. Attach the left and right assembly to the chassis rod with screws. Insert the metal chassis spacer in the top front to prevent chassis sway. Finally, attach the metal connector on top with four screws to help stabilize the entire front assembly. I use some new old stock ball joint connectors to complete the steering setup. Make sure the steering rods are the correct length so you can get the toe in you need. Attach the steering rods to the steering servo saver and again to the knuckles via the ball joint. Once complete, test the toe in looks correct. Having never built a nitro before, the clutch and brake assembly was definitely a new experience. I took the brake assembly apart and reassembled it more than once before I finally got it right. Sandwich the differential between the large plastic parts and secure it all with the metal connector. The brake is assembled from many parts. The brake plates are different sizes and the instructions are not clear. The instructions have an amendment for the brake so make sure you flip to the back for those. Once complete, attach the entire assembly to the rear of the chassis with screws. The assembly helps stabilize the entire rear of the chassis. After the diff assembly has been attached, it's time to assemble the rear wishbones. As with the front, make sure you grease the rods and make sure you insert the grub screw to hold them in place. Top the assembly with the metal connector. The rear shock mount is next, followed by the shocks. Attach the shock mount to the rear diff assembly with screws. Once complete, grab the front and rear shocks and attach the top to the shock mount and the bottom to the wishbone arms. Make sure the shocks have good play. At this point, the build is starting to look like a usable buggy. Next up is the drive shafts. There are four large bearings that go in the housings. If you were buying a new bearing set, the big bearings were not included. I left the new bearings for my runner and used only vintage bearings for this one. One of the more complicated machine metal parts of the vanning is a unique gear assembly. Attach the chain drive gear and spur gear. Turn the chassis upside down and firmly attach the entire engine gear assembly to the chassis rods. It is exciting when you get to the installation of the nitro motor. This is held in a place with a mount plate. The clutch plate and springs on the vintage vanning are intricate. It seems there was a simpler version later that used foam and springs, but I also saved these for my runner. Lock the motor down and you are getting close to being done with the chassis build. It is starting to look sharp. The chain needed to be taken apart at the length that slides out. Once installed, make sure that everything moves freely. The key to good travel is to set the chain tensioner correctly. One of the bigger parts of the buggy is the front bumper. It seems this part gets abused when you run it since of the three complete vannings, I only had one that had an original bumper. It attaches easily to the front with two screws. The motor servo looks very similar to the steering servo. It slides onto the mount post. The radio box is a very distinguishing characteristic of the vanning. There was only one box that was not cracked, so I used it in the queen. Rather than cut the servo mount, on the box, I decided to take the servo apart in order to get the servo to slide into the mount. The fuel system is one of the last chassis steps. Insert the fuel tank and tighten everything up. Run the clear fuel lines and the nitro is ready to go. The box art has the tires with white lettering. This process took considerable time. Since I had not done it before, I experimented with a few techniques. I ended up using a Sharpie paint pen and extra thin to do the lettering. I used a black thin sharpie to touch up places where the pen was overspilled. Overall I was happy with the outcome. Now that I have done a few I think my next set of lettering will be considerably easier. The thin tire lettering was a bit more challenging but in the end I got the hang of it. After cleaning up the overrun you can wipe the tires with armor all and it helps hide the paint and ink transitions to where you can't even notice them close up. Now we will move on to painting. I started with spraying the rear roll cage with white and a quick clear coat. The main roll cage was backed with a dark gray primer and standard Tamiya red paint. I experimented with the different colored primers, white, pink, light gray, and gray. I found the darker gray gave me the richer red that I was shooting for. I set a challenge for myself with the rims. I based the entire rim in glossy black and I wanted to leave the inserts black but paint the front of the rims in chrome. To accomplish this, I used blue tacks stuffed in the rim to keep the chrome out. This process came out even better than I expected. Insert the middle tire and secure the three parts set up with the front and back and four screws on all four tires. Top off the radio box with the lid and the mount screw. Before you attach the four tires, hit them with a little more armor all to make them shine. 
For each tire, start with a large washer, followed by a hex wheel nut. Secure the tires with an airplane nut and make sure it is threaded all the way in. Once installed, make sure that the entire drive assembly operates smoothly. After this step, the chassis is almost looking complete. The rear roll cage attaches to the main roll cage using two screws and two zip ties. If the roll cage is warped, you will need to straighten it since the zip ties will not hold it in place on its own. The roll cage attaches to the chassis with some screws. Things are really starting to look great. The exhaust system is all that's left in order to complete the chassis build. I used some new tubing. The fit was tight, so I soaked the tubing in some hot water to make it stretch easier. The muffler is by far the most characteristic part of the vanning. Attach it to the motor with a 90 degree manifold and some zip ties. One of my vannings still had an original vintage air filter that I inserted into the air intake chamber. After attaching that, the entire chassis build is complete. There are many details in the body shell that are difficult to get to. I ended up painting an original body shell that already had decals applied. I decided to use this version for my queen, but I also have a reproduction shell and decals that I will do later to complete the clean look. The first step in painting the shell are the dark parts, which included the seat belt, steering wheel, and a helmet visor in black. A small touch of silver on the belt buckles added some nice looking details. I pre-cut the box art outlines. I had to deviate from pure box art since I ran out of space on my shell with my design. The cutouts are white, which need to be painted last, so this was masked off. Also masked off was the blue strip that outlined the white boxes. After a final overspray mask off, the red was the first color to be applied. A few coats of this went on first. In order to match the rich red used on the roll cage, I backed the red with the same gray primer. Once the primer was dry, I could remove the blue strip masking and give it a few coats of Tamiya Royal Blue. After removing the overspray mask, the rest of the inside details were finished. I started with the red helmet and also painting the entire front of the shell in Royal Blue. The final paintbrush detail was the yellow driving gloves. Once again, I backed sprayed the entire shell in gray primer to darken everything up. The last step in painting the shell was to remove the white mask boxes and spray those in the driver suit in white. A final silver back spray makes the white pop, and there you have it, a completed Kyosho vanning. This project took a good six months to complete because I needed to source some new parts as well as tear down three vannings to get to the complete set of vintage pieces I needed. I am extremely pleased with the build. The paint job could have been a little better, but I have not painted a Lexan body shell since I was in middle school, so I gave myself a break on that one. Please subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all my new projects. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.